We're going to be TIG welding today. Um, and there's a lot to take in and there's a lot to, to know about it. But the biggest thing you need to be concerned with is that it's a lot of heat management. So the, the techniques I'm using are pretty simple. I actually weld what they, what they would call full throttle. So the, the machine is turned up to 220 amps, which is as high as it goes and my foot is usually always all the way down. So I just go fast. Um, and I control the heat with how fast I actually move. Um, and if you move real slow, then that heat will grow and it'll get into the part. But if you move really quick, it, the heat doesn't have a, enough time to soak into the, the, the metal. So I'll actually weld foot hard down, full throttle, machine full, fully tilt, and just control how fast I go. And now what I wanna do is just get that puddle to move, right? So I'll just get it fired up and I'll just walk that right along uh, about as, as fast as I can get it to go. We're gonna be looking at how to put heat into these things uh, and then basically how to just melt them together. So that'll be the, the first two moves. So let's get to it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is basically join these two parts together, right? So I have my filler rod, which is uh, 5358, which is pretty common. Um, you got my pedal down here. And so what you want to do is you, first, you, know, um, you want to do like a little test practice just to make sure you're going to have good range on you. And it's going to pull across really nicely, just like so. Um, and so let's do a little test run here. Oh yeah, lots of jumping around. So what I did there is I just got the aluminum a little bit hot and I added a little bit of filler to tack them together. Now you'll notice these were perfectly together a second ago and now on this side it's a crack. Um, so it's actually pulling itself apart. So the you know, you, one thing you'll know is the aluminum will constantly move on you and that's kind of what we're facing there. So what you want to do is weld on one side and then flip it around and you're going to go the other way. So this is, I'm going to show you a good weld here, at least I think I can, one eyed and then we'll go from there. So you let the aluminum grow, give it a little dab. Oop. Okay. And so that's your row. You want to see nice even dabs uh we call those dimes uh right so you just want your nice little dabs uh i i got the arc to start i got it to grow on both sides and then i started carrying that puddle all the way down uh across the two parts now let's say let's try that again and you'll notice also it's no longer flat right nice and rocker so uh now i'm going to do it again this time I'm going to go way too much heat and I'm actually need a glove for this one because it was starting to get a little hot. More glove. So I'm going to go add too much heat now. And here, I'll, so I'll tack this side. You'll see the, the puddle grow. I'm adding heat, or pedal, so it goes on both sides. And I lay a little bit of aluminum and it closes right up. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. Now we're going to go way too hot on this, and you're going to see what it looks like when we're done. So... So see that puddle is huge! And I'm also going slower, that's how I'm keeping the heat in. I'm just moving super slow. I actually felt my TIG torch starting to boil there. Alright, so... Now that one... The dimes actually came out good in there, but look how wide that is. So that was from uh, almost too much heat. Also, notice how this one is shiny, and this one is gray. So when you're too hot, it'll come out gray, and when you're cold, it'll come out shiny. So you kind of want it to come out shiny like that, and uh, the grayness is your first inclination that you're going uh, too hot. And it's one of those things you don't really notice until you're done, until you're after you've done your weld, um, that kind of stuff. Now, let's do one that's... Just too dang cold, huh? Shall we? So, 
another cookie get those together strike an arc now well, this one that's full throttle right there now there's a lot of effort with your foot right so how much pedal you add in with your foot is uh, how you add the heat so it's it's how you travel and how much you add in with your foot which of course you can't see on the, on the screen so we're gonna go on and we're gonna try to make this one cold as cold as we can it's usually actually kind of hard to do with aluminum That one got a little hot. So, so the cold is pretty tough, but it see it's uh, nice and narrow, so your heat range really kind of you can kind of see the cold one versus the hot one, how wide the hot one was and how narrow the the cold one was. So, uh, just keep in mind, you know, when it looks gray, you're going too hot. When it looks really narrow and uh, really like really almost too too narrow then you got uh just a little bit too cold so so that's kind of it you know kind of if there's any questions i guess someone could throw it at us <laughs> but uh i'm gonna do one more and then uh we could pretty much finish it up i'm gonna do one at a 90 which is usually uh kind of what they call the hardest one to do So that, here we go. Now when you're adding the puddle, you want to see that puddle react. So see how I dip it in there and it kind of comes back and bounces back at me? That's really what you want to see. That's how you know you're at a good heat range in the T-joint. So I'm running out of filler there a little more. We'll take back over. Now this, you can see this one's a little bit dirty. This piece of aluminum. It's got some gunge on it there. See it floating up to the top. And you can also see... Cool. So that one came out really nice. Um, this one came out a little dirty. You can kind of see like this spot. Uh, it had some stuff floating to the top. Aluminum likes to grab the dirt and then let it flow to the top, and then that's how it makes your welds look like that. But yeah, that's how you get a nice set of dimes. Just kind of move a little, add a dab, move over a little, add a dab. And uh, and you guys can weld pretty good too, huh? Okay, so if you're going from a MIG welder and you bought a TIG so you could weld aluminum, you're actually in luck. The, a lot of it a lot of the principles are shared between the two because a MIG, when you pull the trigger, it's time to go. Um, you know, you can't sit and wait. You got to start welding immediately. Uh, and it's kind of the same thing with aluminum. It's like uh, uh, when, it, when you start welding, it's time to go. When you, weld, when you TIG weld steel, you can really kind of take your time. You can go a lot slower. Uh, the steel um, kind of resists the heat a lot better. So you can kind of in steel, you can kind of get to a point and stop and, and hover for a little bit and just reduce your pedal, and you're good. You can't do that with aluminum. It'll Aluminum will grab that heat and pull it in and turn itself into a mush. Um, kind of like kind of like, like this stuff. Like This was uh, some welding practice from uh, one of my uh, 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 shop guys, and you can see how that's like way too hot. So on that one, he was going way uh, too slow on it. So it's uh, going from MIG to aluminum TIG is actually pretty uh, much the same kind of uh, principle. So uh, that's, a, that's a good one to transition to. Good practices with uh, TIG is, of course, um, I like to do two things. One, uh, watch that puddle, you know, how big it gets. I don't like it to get out of control. If at any point you feel like that puddle is like, like it's chasing you around, uh, that means you're too hot. You just want that puddle to be sitting right on top of your weld, kind of like this one if it's cooled down enough yet. 
So like on that one, you want the puddle to sit right on top of that, and then you just want to feed that filler rod to connect the two sides together. Um, and that's pretty much what you want there. Can ugly welds be strong? And uh, they can. They can indeed be strong, maybe not the strongest, and there's lots of ways around uh, making an ugly weld strong. Um, like this one here uh, that one of my apprentices did was, uh, um, like that one is pretty ugly, but that's good, you know, he's, it's got good fill, you know, he's probably a little underfilled there, just a tad, not, nothing I would think crazy. Um, and the dimes are all stacked up on top of each other and it was a little too hot. But that's a decent one. That one would hold very well. Um, you know, like, like that one's one I did, you know, where it's lots of ripples in it and it looks good. I would say those two are, would hold about the same. So it doesn't necessarily need to be, um, you know, uh, Instagram quality weld. Uh, but, you know, if you can, you know, it doesn't hurt. But, but yeah, it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, shockingly gorgeous to be uh, strong. Keep that in mind and uh, do your best to uh, be a great craftsman. You know, that, that should be your motivation in the first place. Support brands that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.